This is a Newbie 101 lesson, and uh, I hope you get something out of watching. Cheers, guys. Let's uh, let's sh I'll share the screen, and uh, Nate, if you can just let me know if there's trouble in the chat. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, great. So um, you're a new member to Tactical Arbitrage, and you first signed in, and the very first thing you should do is put your MWS keys into the software to run. Now, I'm going to assume for the most part that you have already set up Tactical Arbitrage, uh, but if you have not, please click on the link here, the guide to first setting up, and follow the simple steps to get the MWS keys into the settings page, which is found up here to begin using Tactical Arbitrage. It is a very quick system. Um, most people get it right without uh, any problems at all, but occasionally somebody will miss something. Like, uh, for instance, an, an auth token, um, which is required. I'm going to show you my settings page, actually, with the data removed. So you can see. Now, if I come over here, you'll see that um, the MWS keys for United States need to go into these two boxes here. And if, <coughs> if you're looking to search on the United Kingdom as well, you'll need to go into your UK account and put those in here. Now on this settings page, there is some other things as well. And I'm gonna put this page to the side again, and I'll bring this back in a moment with these unpopulated so that you can actually see some of the other settings on this page and how to best uh, utilize those settings to um, give you the best experience utilizing tactical arbitrage. Okay, so on the product search page, when you very first um, want to begin using it, you'll notice that there is a drop down menu at the top, uh, which gives you a list of 420 sites. Actually, it being that it's currently set on this page for USA, on the settings page for USA, you're seeing around about 320 sites, or maybe 340 sites now, on that particular on that particular drop-down box. However, if you're searching in Cap for Canada to Canada, for instance, you'll only see about 20, and UK to UK, you'll see more like 75, and that will change accordingly depending on what you've got that set for. Now, while we're on the subject of this setting here, um, and we'll touch on this more in a more advanced conversation, you are able to source from the UK and compare with um, the United States Amazon if you wanted to do some cross-country type settings. And you can use pretty much any permutation of that that works for you. Australia to UK, Australia to Canada, United States to Canada, and so, so on and so forth. The majority of people don't need to change this from USA to Amazon.com because traditionally that's where everybody will start. Now coming back over here, uh, you'll notice that alongside each of these names it'll tell you whether or not it is a title search and therefore matching by title or UPC search and matching by universal product code. Now what that means... Hey, Alex, uh do you want me to ask you the questions as we as we go if they're if they're relevant or do you want to hold them off till the end? I'd rather hold them off to the end. Um, if if everybody is okay with me continuing at this point, and I'm definitely circle back to these questions if you want to. Yeah, keep, go, keep yeah, go ahead. I said there's there's one short one, but I think that that would be better if we just hold it off till the end. It, um, it, if you don't I, mind, if if what if somebody says that he's going too fast, I'd need him to slow down. That's totally fine as well. Um, let me know about something like that, though, because I can't actually see the chat from from my screen here. Um, yeah, we just had one. Marsha wanted to know. She said, "There's three store reductions on your page. Uh, is that coming soon?" And that was back when you were. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll show you that in a moment. This is uh, being that I'm the admin. Uh, we unlock things in my account first, and we test them to make sure that they're running properly and we test them to make sure that they look good and they feel good for the user. And then providing that I feel like it is essentially an upgrade, then we, um, we add that. 
and the and I'll come to this in a second because uh, as I come down the list here I'll get to that in a moment so on here um, universal product code and title matching are the two types of matching now um, if a website has a universal product code on it for example ace hardware and uh, let me even show you how this works if I go to ace hardware And uh, we'll open up Ace Hardware here, and we have a look at one of these products. Anyone will do. You will notice here that there is a universal product code for this item. And if I'm to search that on Amazon, I'll get a nice, exact, universe, universal product code match between those two items. So. I might decide that I would like to see nice, clean, quality matches all the time, especially when I'm starting out. So in that case, I may select to use a universal product code website here when choosing to source from. Now, we actually have the option in the settings page for you to see only UPC sites and products. So you can go in there and you can select this, UPC sites and products only, and then this list here will only show you the UPC sites. So if you're a newbie, that's probably a good place to start because you, more often than not, unless somebody on Amazon has put an incorrect UPC alongside their product or somebody at Ace Hardware has put an incorrect UPC, the match will be nice and clean and um, much easier for you to determine whether or not that's a product that you would like to buy to resell. Now title searching on the other hand this is where it gets tricky. We obviously want to include as many sites as possible in tactical arbitrage but um, we understand that matching may not be as good with a title search site. Now why? Well for starters there's no universal product code so when a universal product code isn't is absent, we need to look at other factors on the screen to try and get a good match. Now we had to deactivate some sites, for example, Big Lots, because the quality of their titles was so poor that there's just no way we could ever get a match. There was titles like, and I've used this example before, but titles like Dog Bowl. Now Dog Bowl is not going to match to the um, the Snappy Tom um, Red galvanized uh, large dog bowl. That's never going to match to that. Dog bowl will match to all of the dog bowls ever in a random order on Amazon and then Tactical Arbitrage will throw an incorrect match and then sure enough somebody on Facebook will say hey I'm getting mismatches. So with the title searches we have endeavored to utilize the best matching algorithms we can get. So sometimes we grab a portion of the page, maybe the brand from one part of the page, and we will cobble, cobble it together with another part of the page which might be uh, the, the, the um, name of the actual product. So um, for instance the word Nike might be in a completely different part of the page to the word Air Jordans. Now the word Air Jordans might have matched anyway, but by putting Nike Air Jordans and then maybe a little more detail beside it, and then we get that nice match. So we are forever going through and cleaning up uh, where we can, poor titles, because um, it's, it's not our intention to provide mismatches, but sometimes uh, the software will throw mismatches when doing that. Now, the mismatches um, do come up in conversation enough, but uh, that it's worth touching on a little more. And uh, the way this happens, and this is primarily with title searches, um, will be also <coughs> um, more so when you have run a, uh, a scan. Oh look, I've got it set for live scanning at the moment, or have I got it set for cache? And I've got cache on it, it's just this This is uh, not been heavily scanned, so it's... I'll come back to this in a second. We've got a lot of ground to cover in the next um, next 30 to 40 minutes. So, so these items here are actually um, quite good titles and then therefore quite good matches. The North Face Women's Borealis is matching to the North Face Women's Borealis backpack and although that there is a color variation there that is actually a matching bag 
and uh, I'll get more into um, I'll get more into these uh, variations on colors in a moment. So that's actually a match, and so on. But sometimes um, when you do a scan and you start seeing positive ROI, the positive ROI will happen because it's a mismatch. Like I would go as far as saying that this item here, I oh know that is a match, that is a match. See the matching on a lot of these is actually very good if you just run a single page scan with zero filters. Because what happens when you put filters in there is it'll remove anything which is perhaps a negative ROI and it is always the mismatched items that have a positive ROI. And why? Because let's say for instance a $10 item has mismatched with another item. That mismatched item might be a $50 item. So it throws a 500% ROI. So because of that causality, even though the matches are very good on a single page or even multiple page scan with no filters, because of the causality, when you have filters in place, the mismatches will appear because of the mismatch in price as well. So sometimes people will run a scan and on the view data page, they'll see four products that have actually appeared in the results. But those four products, um, you know, two of those products might be a mismatch. So um, you can eliminate this by selecting UPC only in the early days, but once you be get, getting a little bit more advanced, you'll understand more about how to use um, tactical arbitrage and titles to, um, to with, with manage your expectations when it comes to titles. Because I can't go to biglots.com and say, can you please change your title from dog bowl to the more complicated title that will match better with Amazon. And there is no way I can create an algorithm that makes the word dog bowl match properly with Amazon's. However, we have, um, just before I move on from that, we, we have two solutions um, for this. Uh, and one solution is integrated already, and I'll get to that when we get to the view data page. And it is a crowdsourced manual matching solution. So if you see that dog, pole, dog bowl um, product matching incorrectly, you can easily go and match it yourself by doing a search on Amazon and entering the correct ASIN. And that actually matches it for every single person in the member base, which is fantastic because the next time that product appears, everybody just sees the correct product. And every month we get about 10,000 correct matches from our member base, meaning that you know we're getting about an eighth of a million matches per year at that rate, uh, which is fantastic for just making the entire database better. Now the second thing is still coming and it is a little uh, pet project of mine that I thought would be a fantasy but is becoming a reality which is going to slot somewhere in between title matching and UPC matching and it's going to be along the lines of if universal product code match fails compare the histogram of the image with Amazon's images and determine if we can get a match between the two images and therefore, um, before, before we discard that, then we move to the title. Now that's going to clear up a lot, of, um, a lot of mismatches where we just find the exact same matching image on Amazon and match the product that way. So that is a complex solution and I've got multiple guys working on that and uh, I feel every week we get a little closer towards that becoming a, re a reality. And the, on the honest answer is, is that I simply won't rest until this matches everything as well as it possibly can in every single area. So um, I will come back to that in the coming weeks. Um, that's certainly not conversation for today, but just know that that's coming. Now, we've got past the matching conversation. We can get deeper into the actual operations of the machine. So um, I won't look at use bulk and use wholesale list till the end. Let's have a look at a basic scan. I'm gonna delete that old data and uh, we'll, we'll select something very simple like target. Now, why am I selecting target? When my recommendation is you pick one of the other hundreds of pages on here. I, I recommend you don't just sit on target or Walmart because obviously a lot of newbies go beeline straight for the big department stores. There's always gonna be deals to find there and particularly if you can find deals there at this time of year, even if you've got competition, it's Q4 so that stuff is going to sell. But 
I recommend that um, you also look at the other hundreds and hundreds of stores. There is so many different types of stores, toys, categories, um, kitchen stuff. Uh, it's just sports stuff. There's even little tiny computer parts, you know, stuff that you would never think to sell that are like $2.50 computer parts that are selling for $16 each on Amazon. And you know, those $2.60 parts might have a, a deal that you buy for, get one for $2, get them for $2 each sort of thing. So you gotta keep looking at this other stuff too. So, um, but I'm picking target in this case because I wanna show an example where the category is not a URL. It's very important that you read this sidebar here. In this instance, it says category example. When selecting a category, use the code following the N dash contained in the URL. So if you look up here in the URL of a target category, there's a little tiny section that says, in this case, N dash 5XT9. It's normally five digits, but if you drill deeper, sometimes it's longer. And as per the instructions, you want the code after the N dash. So in this case, it's this. Now, in most cases, you'll find that it's a URL. Um, here's a random site. It says uh, HTTP superbiz slash query dot PHP category equals 21. Now, this means that if I go to this site here, the kind of URL that I'm looking for is the kind that is indicated in the examples. So we're looking for these categories ending in category equals 21. So that doesn't mean go into Superbiz, do a search for, um, you know, Masco, which is one of their products, because this is different. This is query question mark search equals Masco. So that's different from this category equals 21, category equals 154. There are patterns over here that are reasonably easy to follow for each site. Now, if these become too um, complex for you to find the correct uh, categories to use, especially in the early days, I also recommend these bulk lists. Now, bulk lists are sold by third parties. They're not created by me, but I do find them useful enough to include as a recommendation. Um, down here in the sidebar, it says, what are premium bulk lists? Now there is a whole list of people, there's a whole list of sites where people have gone through and picked out some of the bigger sites and just basically extracted all of the, um, all of the workable category links for every single one of those sites. And there is a lot there. There's already 127 of these sites. Now understandably, the people who have put time into these have um, allocated a cost to these but um, because there are so many of these now, I believe that certain bulk lists uh, you, where you can get multiple stores at once have come into play. I think that you'll find that when you are starting out, one or two of these might be useful for you to get a feel for like just jumping into some scans. But also, I also firmly believe that you can survive without these simply by getting a bit of a feel for how the category examples match up with the kinds of categories that you see on the other sites. Like Ace Hardware, for instance, um, it's, it's category ID equals a number, and then there's some, um, some numbers with dots after it. And you'll find that if you go to any of the Ace, Ace Hardware type categories, that's kind of how they're presented at the top of the screen. Um, it, as long as it's not a major deviation from the examples, you'll normally find that they work without any problems. So um, you'll know if it doesn't work because it'll throw an error on the sidebar. It'll give you a response error. Okay, so now that you've got an idea of how to select your category and how to select your product search, um, let's run a scan. So we're gonna do a scan without any filters first. We're just gonna go page one to page one and I'll show you what happens in the sidebar over to the right. Let me hit the submit button. Now, why is this happening so quickly? Um, doesn't tactical arbitrage take longer than this? Now, that's the question that I will cover now. So in the settings, which I'll bring back over again, there is a feature called
called cache. Now every single website you can set every single sorry every single link in the upper menu here Amazon flips reverse search the library search and product search all can be allocated its own level of cache. Now what does cache mean? In this instance I've got use cache five days. That means that if anybody got um, anybody got new data from that target scan in the last five days then it will give me their data um, at lightning speeds. So there is about uh, in fact, it was actually happening too fast. I recently injected a 0 0.01 second between each uh, result so that the servers had a chance to breathe because the servers were were having trouble when like it would just give it 2,000 results really, really quickly. So now there's a 0 0.01 of a second. So every, every 100 uh, cached products takes an extra second now. But... Um, so uh, if, you, if you prefer to see your data right up to the second, then you would select live here. Now I'm going to, um, I will show you what a live scan looks like, okay? Now I'm going to in the next, in my other window, which you can't see, um, set that for live. And I'll delete the data and uh, it'll be the same data don't worry um, aside from maybe some pricing differences and uh, some rank changes but I'll show you how the speeds differ differ um, I will tell you more about this section here in a moment submit So now instead of those quick cache results going bang, 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 it's now going, uh, each scan, each, each product is taking a, a period of time. We have to actually send the software to um, Target. We have to send the software over to Amazon. We have to do some calculations. We have to make sure that the FBA fee that you're getting in return is, is, is correct. And every single website is different. Sometimes a website makes us navigate through a bunch of hoops to provide you the data. Sometimes a website gives us a nice clean path to the data. So occasionally you'll see something, this is fairly zippy I would say, this is taking about two seconds per product by the look of things. But sometimes you'll, you'll go and you'll be getting live data from a site and you might see it taking six to seven seconds per product. And really that's just us getting it as fast as we can possibly get it to you, um, essentially live. However, you might then visit that exact same page with cache on. So if somebody has gone there in the last um, five days, or you can set it for three days or two days or one day, 12 hours, six hours. If somebody has gone in any of these time windows that you have set, then, uh, then it'll give you the cache result instead, which is, which is really fast. Now, uh, we haven't launched this yet, but we are making it as well that you can, uh, you can download the log. And uh, we're at, we, are actually, we are actually linking that to the support page as well. So pretty soon you'll be able to just go support and then link it to your most recent log. So if you've got a question about a particular scan that you had, you'll be able to just link it to the log for that particular scan with a drop down menu and uh, we will understand um, what happened uh, better. But at the moment the, uh, the download um, the download log page looks a little something like um, if I can find it looks a little something like this and uh, this will let our developers know exactly what you saw and exactly what you scanned with the process URL at the top to make it a lot easier for us in the future to um, to isolate where you had a problem or where you felt you had a problem because uh, Sometimes the problems are really just from um, setting filters are incorrectly and, and that kind of thing. So um, what this has done it is, it is, it is it has placed data over on the view data page. Now um, I'll come to the view data page in a second. And uh, before I do, I want to just touch on these filters here. <coughs> and there's a lot to, lot to look at. And uh, 
in next week. I need to remember before diving too deeply into each of these pages. Um, next week we're going to be examining the product search page in a lot greater depth. Uh, but initially I'm just going to touch on this. There are a bunch of filters down here that you can use and I suggest at first that you do not over filter. Over filtering is one of the key reasons that people don't see results. You can, uh, you can find really good ROI items but the rank is not so good. Or you can find really great ranked items but the ROI is below what you would hope for. If you set both of these at incredibly tight, uh, incredibly tight filters, then it's going to remove both those possible good products in one foul swoop. Because what you're actually saying is, I want to remove all ranks over, say, let's say you've set this super tight. I want to remove everything over 100,000 in toys. We all know that there's better, that there's still great toys over 100,000 rank. If you've only got to look at a, a keeper graph of 150,000 ranked toy, and you'll see like that little um, keeper spike happening, you know, a couple of times or several times a week. So um, I would suggest that at first you you do put you do use filters, but don't make them overly um, intense at first. I would suggest that you you keep it manageable so that you actually start to see results and get a feel for how the results are distributed to you. Let me have a look over on the view data page and see whether or not there was any products that would have been worth considering. Being that it's target toys at this kind of year, I would expect it to all be cleaned out. But then again, I did not tick the remove out of stock products box. So there could be some items here that are out of stock. Now, um, these these products are all quite, uh, I'm just trying to find an example of what I was talking about with setting filters too harsh. Okay, so you're probably not that interested in a 7% return on investment product. Um, but let's assume that that said, you know, that's, let's assume that was a little higher. Or maybe Target had a sale on which was 20% off and that brought that return on investment up to maybe 25% or something like that. Um, or maybe you even stacked it higher, you had a gift card for Target. Uh, which gave you another 10% off and maybe then you, you used uh, doubly VIP and you got another 7% off and maybe suddenly this Star Wars toy isn't looking so bad it's more like 35% but you set your sales rank at um, remove everything over a hundred thousand then suddenly you don't see this item and it's left for somebody else to grab I don't know if this sells you well not to throw you off your groove, but I think that I think you just touched on uh, somebody had asked on the side why they would want the multiple store discounts, um, and I think that that's really one of the most important tips as far as uh, as going and, and and deciding what to run and and how to run your uh, searches. If you have something that you can start on, like a base point, like you know that uh, Toys R Us is doing a ten percent sale on on a certain category or site wide. Or something like that. You can target your your uh, your product searches towards that, right? <coughs> so you're immediately giving yourself an edge. Absolutely. Um, and and in regard. So so then you know there's there's a lot of uh, it, it just throwing out a a, an empty, a big net isn't going to be as uh, as valuable as using things like that to your advantage and knowing that something's already going to have a a uh, better ROI just right from the rip since there's that promo or whatever going on. So that was just, I wanted to mention that before we uh, got past where you were still kind of talking about it, so. Yeah, that is important. And you know, we've got, for now, what we've got is over in the sidebar, we've got this little, down the bottom here, we've got this little, uh, you know, check for coupons at Retail Me Not. So before you run each scan, I would suggest you always, you know, click on this button and see whether or not the site that you're looking at um, actually has any deals at the moment right and uh, we're actually going to be it's a, it's a, it's actually a priority for me now a bit because of a new feature I've just added but we're actually going to be adding a coupon feed in there um, my it's a major focus of this week where it'll be a page on tactical arbitrage where you can you can just see the new coupons appearing like a ticker tape I guess they'll just appear um, every time they're added and they will be specifically attributed to the to these sites that we have on tactical arbitrage so um, when there is a 20% off deal 
you'll see that appear and uh, you can then go decide to run that page insert 20% in that first store store price reduction there now why that is I, amazing by the way why, why have I got three uh, three boxes here okay so so we used to just have two and they were, they were on two rows and this actually isn't released publicly yet but my concept is that um, to truly maximize uh, getting that maximum return you would maybe use a store coupon like maybe there's 15% off if you spend over a hundred dollars that's a fairly common coupon um, you you probably be using a cashback site and I recommend using rev ROI which is a great um, a great tool to uh, to find out whether or not that particular store has a cashback by utilizing somewhere like shop your way or Ebates um, and the third box we just added because um, people use raise gift cards like gift cards they got from say gift card granny or or raise and um, often that works out to maybe they've got a $50 gift card for $42 and you know that's what is what is that somebody do the math for me that is that a 16% discount so you would then put that into the third box as well that is all going to adjust your return on investment and we actually take these store price reductions and we use that in the calculation on the view data page so that the return on investment that you're seeing on that page has this in, in integrated into the calculation and the return on investment that um, you're offered in the in the database there is actually correct based on the information you fed into it here Alex another reason why why that's important that I think isn't really super common sense um, when if you're doing a 20% discount a lot of people I've, I've seen the logic where people say okay 20% off 10% uh, on my cash back which is let's say 5% on my cash back and then a 5% gift card and they go okay let's add that up that's 20% so I'm just getting 20% margins pretty much right off the or whatever I said, let's say, yeah, 25 and five. So you got 30% margins, you think like right off the rip, but it's not, you're not adding them. You're at, you know, you're doing no. it in a different way. So by entering them in here, you're gonna get the actual, uh, it's gonna be the actual uh, mathematical logic that is actually behind it. So as opposed to yep. it being in this example where it would be 40, technically, if you added them up, it, that number is not going to be there, right? No, because it'll be tw less 20% and then less 10% of the remaining, then less 10% of the remaining again. And that's, and right. that's going to adjust the, um, the, the sum. Right. It seems kind of like common sense, but I've seen it. I've seen it so many times where people have actually added all the discounts and savings up like that when it's actually uh, taken relative to the order that they come in. So if you're, if you're getting 10% cash back, you're getting 10% cash back on the price after the discount. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so yeah, that was that's another another reason why that, why that's important. So, so that um, as as Nate's correctly identified, this is an important filter to consider. This is probably one of the most important filters to consider to have success using tactical arbitrage to find those places where you can stack your discounts and include those in the calculation right when beginning your search because that's where you're going to find, um, that's where you, by, by making that extra little bit of effort at the start of your day before you run your scan, that's when the results are gonna appear in your view data page that people who have just decided to, um, you know, to just sh you know, shoot from the hip at a random category and just see, does this have any positive ROI? It, it may well do if you utilize their store coupon plus, um, you know, plus a cashback site, plus a gift card, and many people don't right. actually go as far as the gift card, but even just those first two boxes, having those populated with something is going to put many more items on your view data page than leaving those boxes blank. And so any anybody just starting out, and particularly anybody who says, I just don't seem to be getting it, how is everybody else finding deals? I would suggest that this is probably the main thing that they are missing, is not finding, um, is not, you know, I, one tip Sean Mayo gave me, which I actually found was quite useful, is he has gone as far as signing up to the newsletter of every single US store on the product search page and, and directing those newsletters to one dedicated email that he checks every single day. So he might wake up and there'll be 11 emails in there from the 300 stores indicating that today they've got 15% off at this store. Today, if you buy um, kitchenware at Macy's, you get 25% off. 
today. And so he, he's like literally got his finger right on the pulse. I said to him, man, you should, you should, if you're going to sell um, lists, you should send a list to a direct, <laughs> a direct uh, link to each of those newsletter signup pages because I, I believe that that would be very useful to a lot of people. But I think he's held off on that because he knows that my um, my coupon feed is coming directly into the software soon, and, and that's going to be a similar solution. But um, in the interim, until that happens, getting getting that data um, fed to you in the email in your email is uh, is a really smart move. I thought that was a great tip, and that's one one of the reasons he's he's a, a pro user of tactical arbitrage. So, hey, um, Alex, can you, can you uh, just? Highlight over the retail me not thing. I don't. I think a lot of people are actually missing that. Sure thing. So, um, okay. So this is target. It's always at the very bottom, just above the image, and it says, yeah. "Click here to check for coupons at retail me not." It opens in a new window, and uh, it just tells you what's there. Um, this is ten percent off domestics on Sunday to Wednesdays. Uh, using the code fall favorites um, it seems to be working it's been tested by retail me not as working um, there will be some uh, there'll be some logistics behind um, certain products that that works for domestics to me is a little bit ambiguous so I think that you'll, you'll need to investigate that further but um, if you decided to run that particular set of products um, and you've inserted that category in there then you would put that in the first box as 10% before running that category. Mm. Now then, then you would go somewhere like Doubly or Ebates and find you know your 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 six percent that you can get on off target that way. And then let's say you found a raise card that somebody was selling <coughs> two hundred dollars worth of raise cards. They were selling them at one hundred and eighty dollars. That's another ten percent off there. So then you'd run that category with that data in there, and the results that you would get would be accurate based on actually what you paid for the gift card, the cashback that you will inevitably get from the cashback site, and the current discount that you'll be saving at the checkout in Target. So those three combined will stack to give you your actual return on investment. And it's important that you include those where you can. And while while we're here, I'm just going to I'm just going to touch on the filters that newbies probably should pay attention to and which ones you can probably safely ignore when you're first starting out. Okay, uh, if you're starting out, um, if you're not using a prep house in a 0% tax state, like, like a lot of people are, if, you, if you're deciding to ship yourself and you're getting it shipped directly to you and you are paying sales tax, make sure to include that in there. That will actually increase. It'll work against your reductions here, but it'll give you an accurate amount. You need to know what's accurate and so therefore include the sales tax in there. Now, um, removing the ranks over a certain amount. <coughs> At the moment, this is how it works. Um, we have an advanced solution coming for that, but I won't get into that today. Uh, for now, uh, you should try and have a feel for what um, you would expect to be a rank that you are willing to look at. Now, before we saw a 350,000 rank in toys, and I'm gonna show you that it, it seems like the sort of thing you might discard and you'll be happy to know that a lot of users probably have discarded this and left it on the table, left it by the roadside. But if I mouse over this keeper graph here, I can see that it sells. I mean, it's not a massive seller, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't kick a couple out of my inventory. I mean, because it's, it's going to move and it's going to move quick, quicker at quarter four. Um, you can see those spikes there. That in the course of the last month, it's probably moved one, two, three, four, five, six units. So. Um, that's a 350,000 rank in toys. So make sure that when you are populating this box that you don't set this too tight, that you miss out things to put in. If you're starting out an FBA, you want to make sales. You want to like start getting those reviews. Um, and the only way to do that is by moving inventory. So by, by, by going for like the, by going for the cream on top right from the get go, you may miss out on some of the stuff that's, that's, um, sit, sitting at the bottom there and is still you know, juicy fruit. So um, other filters, uh, remove products with more than a certain amount of sellers. I actually don't tend to not mess around with this too much um, because I, I care more about what the buy box is now than whether there's, you know, a hundred sellers selling it. Uh, 
some people care care about this a lot. Um, if you're going to put something in there, I normally put a hundred. Um, remove oversized products. That might be something that you're interested in. If you don't want to mess around with anything that is going to incur um, too much of a weight charge when shipping into Amazon, um, advanced users will likely leave that there and determine on a case by case basis. Remove out of stock products. This will not work for every single store. However, for a lot of stores it will work. And you should also know that if you are using cache and getting cached results, that even with this box ticked, you may see items that you go, oh wow, that looks good, I'll go buy it, but it's out of stock. It wasn't out of stock when the, cache, when the original live scan was run, but because you're using cache, then uh, you are seeing the product, um, you're seeing the product as in stock, which is now out of stock. So um, I actually do use this filter, but I've spoken to Christopher Grant who runs BrickSeek and he's, he's educated me in the way that those people doing retail arbitrage um, often leave this box unticked and then if they see a positive ROI item in there, they don't discard it, they'll use BrickSeek to see whether or not that particular product is at their local Target or Walmart so that they can hop in the car and go and grab it and then send it into Amazon that way. There's multiple ways of utilizing um, each of these filters and tactical arbitrage to what suits you best. You might live nowhere near a Target or Walmart and you want to use this box every time, like, like me, or you might live right next door and then you think, well, why don't I leave that box unticked and then see whether or not my, um, my Ohio store has got that in stock. Columbus, Ohio, I should say. Um, shout out to uh, Ohio winning yesterday, Nate, am I right? Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. No, that's cool. Did uh, did Ohio win a game yesterday? Oh, they did. <laughs> they did, my friend. Thank you for asking. Go box. <laughs> now, uh, remove if Amazon contains no weight or size data. So sometimes people um, will create a product at Amazon and they won't they won't like put that SKU on the shelves at Amazon with the with the weight or size, and so it's difficult for us to create an exact. Um, calculation on what that FBA return is going to be. Um, I tend to leave that box unticked because we still show you the result. Um, I don't know if there's going to be one here. No, there wasn't one. But you will see these, <coughs> beg your pardon, you'll see these numbers in red um, if, if the incorrect weight and data is entered at Amazon. That means that we have guessed the best guess we can um, what what your FBA return is going to be, but um, we can't say for sure because we don't know what the weight and size of that that product is going to be as indicated by Amazon. So when so you can leave that box unticked. You, you can probably ignore that. Remove if Amazon is also a seller and currently in stock. If you don't want to ever compete with Amazon, you might want to tick that box. Uh, I don't have a problem competing with Amazon, so that's up to you. Um, you probably want to use this, remove products with an Amazon price of less than. So, so there's not really a lot of point in looking at $12 items on Amazon. Somebody will tell me, well hang on a minute, I, I, can, I can find $1 products and sell them for $12 all day long on Amazon. Um, that's great if you can do that, but, but I, I just automatically put $15 in that box and if it's below $15 I, I'm not really interested. Um, if you wanted to give yourself a little bit more room, put like $14 just so you can get those $14.95s and whatnot. But I tend to find that um, chasing after things with, with, a, with a $1.27 return on investment it is, not, is not really something that I want to put too much time into um, when, when sort of, you know, you've still got to do paperwork for each product and it all takes time and, you know, every dollar is sweet, but um, sometimes it's, it's less sweet if, if it takes extra work. So I, I tend to put 15 in there. I'm sure some, um, some heavier hitters uh, put even higher. Now, we will save these next filters for a later uh, webinar, but they are not really something you need to worry about except in extremely isolated cases. So don't worry about these so much. Uh, there, well, there's three here. The first one, maybe, maybe you want to know about. So, if you want to remove everything which is a which is a pack, 
or a, uh, a bundle on Amazon, um, or you want to remove everything with the keyword um, Lego, for instance, that's, that's where you would use this one. So we will remove any results that are comma separated here. So if you want to go Lego, comma, bundle, comma, Nike, comma, KitchenAid, um, you can put that in there if you want, and it'll just remove those items from the results if it sees that in the title. Um, these two I will skip for now. And uh, regarding restricted products, um, I, I am integrating something. It's a it's a basic thing where you can ba if if there's a brand you don't want to see, we're going to have it so that you can tick that brand, and that brand won't appear for you again. Um, so. There's reasons why I personally wouldn't use it, um, but we get asked for it all the time. So I am going to have that integrated in the next uh, in the next week. That particular tool as well in the settings page. Um, if you want a more detailed look at which particular products, or more to the point, which particular ASINs are restricted for you, um, then I would suggest using either Matt Colvin's um, "Can I Sell It." Uh, extension, which is a really cool extension, which uh, tells you on the Amazon page if it is saleable for you. Or I would suggest clicking on this little button here alongside each product, which will open the ASIN in your Seller Central page and alongside, uh, alongside the ASIN it'll tell you whether or not you can currently sell that product or not. So if you see something that looks all perfect everywhere, you probably should always hit that button once anyway, just to see whether or not that's something that you can sell. So <coughs> we are probably not going to get, uh, after we've done this page, I'll look at the view data a bit. I think we're going to have to save flips library and um, reverse for the, uh, for the next session because product search is taking so long. But, um, we're getting through product search and we'll look at view data as well before we wrap and then I'll take a few questions and uh, and hopefully hopefully you're getting something out of this um, if you're new. So this next one you can probably skip. Only calculate FBA return if Amazon sale is at least a certain times the store price. Okay, this is an old filter. Now, originally tactical arbitrage was slower and it did not have cache. So every second counted. So the reason this was in there, it's like, well, if you're not seeing, if you're not seeing that this item is at least two times the price, if you're not seeing that it's at least two times the price on Amazon, then why bother doing the extra calculations to see whether or not to present it to you on the view data page? So we put this in there so that if you um, wanted to save a fraction of a second on a non-cached scan, um, it'll basically it'll basically move on to the next product faster. So if it sees, um, if it sees on Target, it's $10, but it sees on, um, on Amazon, it's only $15. Well, that's only a 1.5 times the store price. So it'll kick it out of there much quicker and just move on to the next one. So you can use that if you want, and it will save a little bit of time on a non-cache scan, or you can just like not worrying, worry about that for now and just um, move on. Now, if you're using a prep prep house, they will normally have a price to ship a standard product and a price to ship an oversized product. You can insert those costs there and that will affect the um, calculations and your return on investment. Um, also- if anybody, if anybody doesn't know what a prep and ship company is, since this is for beginners, please go look into it. We're not gonna really touch on it today, but uh, when it comes to lifestyle business, as far as online arbitrage, adding a prep and ship company takes it to a whole another level. And the ability to take out those prep and ship costs from the beginning and then using those in your buying decisions is gonna make your life so much easier. You're not gonna have to touch or see any of your product. Uh, it's not for everybody, but definitely look into it. Uh, just type in prep and ship companies, US or wherever you are in, in Google and see what you find. Uh, just definitely worth looking into. That's that's great great advice, and there's there's two that I personally recommend. Um, the first is FBA Prep and Ship, which is in Oregon, zero percent uh, tax free Oregon. It's Monica and Ben Coombs. They are closed to all people unless you specifically say, "Hey, I am a Tactical Arbitrage member. Alex sent me." They will um, open the doors for you. Uh, the other one that I would recommend is Prime Zero Prep with Brendan Sullivan. 
Uh, he's also in a 0% tax state. Lovely guy. And uh, I'm not sure whether dropping my name will get you in the door with him. He closes periodically because they're, ex they're a very in-demand um, prep house. Uh, but also one worth looking into. And I'm sure that other people have recommendations of worth as well. So um, also these, these particular kinds of companies may have a cost to bundle. Um, I'll just segue into this next filter, to bundle an item. So what will happen, we've got a quantity filter on the view data page. So if you've linked a uh, single item at target what, to what matches to a UPC on Amazon, which may be four, a four pack, then um, you can change on the view data page uh, using this edit quantity filter here and uh, <coughs> if you edit the quantity of something um, it'll automatically add the cost to create bundle amount if you have added that in there um, and for anybody who's wondering it it uses the cost to create bundle amount um, in place of the standard product amount so it doesn't like compound those incorrectly it'll use that um, as it's supposed to use it if your prep house has that feature. So um, you also might want to like allocate 80 cents a pound for shipping price into Amazon. This is a really, uh, this is a really arbitrary amount, but if you just want a, a, a vague, but you know, less, uh, more accurate than putting zero, um, you can put in there a cost per pound to ship to Amazon. I put in about 80 cents. Um, if you're shipping little things like makeups and stuff, or if you know that it's going to a, a more local warehouse, uh, you can probably adjust that accordingly, um, but uh, I, I tend to, to just put 80 cents in there, so um, that's up to you. Um, only keep data if gross profit is a certain amount. You might want to chuck out anything that doesn't give you um, at least a few dollars. Uh, once again, don't set your filters too aggressively. It is quarter four, so what's, what gives you $3 today might be giving you $8 in, in a month's time. So I would, still, I would still like to see, I still like to see the treasure, even if I'm going to chuck the treasure away. I still like to know that I've seen it and that I've appraised it, and then I've decided, you know, I don't want it anymore. But um, I would suggest you put a few dollars in there. You don't really want to look at the stuff which, which has only got 70 cents profit or a dollar 25 profit um, and only keep the data if the gross return on investment is at least a certain amount now this is a, a, a heavily used filter and it's a heavily um, abused filter there's so many new people coming along and they you know they hope and uh, you know I love optimism but they hope that they can put 75 percent in there and just see pages and pages of of results it's not really like that. I mean, if I send you down the river with a fishing rod, you're not going to just pull in a hundred big fish on your first day down there. I, I want you to keep this gross return on investment at a believable rate in the early days and remind yourself that even if you had the best investment manager in the world, getting, getting even like a 10% return on your money in a month would be... Um, would be significant. You know, it's not something that you can really do. Um, obviously, I think, it, I think it's important just from a business perspective, Alex, that people, uh, you know, there's a difference between people who are new to tactical arbitrage and people who are new to Amazon. And if you're going to continue to grow your business at scale, 70% margins are not going to be feasible, uh, you know, long term. But if you're somebody who's brand new and you're only trying to sell, uh, you know, a couple of items a week and you have no money and you want to make sure that they, turn quick and make you money really quick, uh, you know, you can only do that for so long Definitely. to lower your margins to get more volume. That's not, um, that's but not to say that you won't see results, that you might, you might see these results, and I won't even call them necessarily outliers, but you, you might see those really great results, but you, you, shouldn't just, you shouldn't just expect them all to be served up for you. One, right. like, sim... A symbiot like symbiotics is really important here and that basically means that having all of your pieces in place so that it all just clicks is super important if you've done this section up here properly you are more likely to see like you know 55% return on investment and maybe 80 83% return on investment you're more likely to see that sort of stuff 
if you've done your homework and you've set this data up here, you set your expectations realistically in here, you've researched the, the sites that you should be looking at up here, and, uh, and, and maybe you've kept your finger on the pulse with getting your hands on that coupon data faster. And that symbiosis is what's going to start populating that view data page with some real gold. And this is what seasoned members know. That the, the reason why we've got members that have been with us since the very first day we opened is because they worked out that by putting, even just filling this page out correctly will be will get you like substantial amounts of income done correctly. And that's before we even touch on all of the other ways that you can now make money with tactical arbitrage. But uh, the, the last two filters I'll just quickly touch on, um, I'm, I'm trying to move along now because we've already hit 11 o'clock and I was, I, I was uh, optimistic myself in thinking we'd get this done in 45. But um, I'll just spend 10 minutes on view data page after this and, uh, and then field a few questions and then we'll wrap it up. So uh, the last two filters are, um, I like this one, always show Amazon out of stock results. Um, now I will mouse over this blue question mark, but first I'm gonna say these blue question marks are here for a reason. I've tried to write them in understanding ways, but everything I've just said is pretty much on these blue question marks and they're right there on the page. There's really nothing um, that's been missed or is difficult to, to follow if you use that help note. But this particular one's important. Um, if you see a product appear which is Amazon out of stock, um, let's say for instance it's Pie Face, right? And uh, let's say it says, let's say it says it's matching with Pie Face, but Amazon's out of stock. Now Amazon's not out of stock of Pie Face. For some reason, it might happen where um, the universal product code might match with a product that Amazon no longer has on the shelf. It is an accurate match, but since then, somebody else has created a matching ASIN, and, uh, or, sorry, a matching product on, under a different ASIN, and it is a 20,000 ranked item and is selling all day long every day. So don't automatically think that if something appears that Amazon is out of stock of, that it'll be, um, it'll be all yours and that you're the only one who'll be able to sell it. You're going to need to um, do, do your homework on Amazon and check whether or not that particular product is sold under a different ASIN. Um, so if you don't understand what I've just said, make sure you read that question mark, ask me questions about it uh, later and we can, uh, we can touch on it more then. <coughs> Um, so on the view data page, this is where the results will appear. And if you've got a uh, universal product code matching, then you'll have these nice little green matches, which makes you realize that the, that the universal product code has matched between the store and Amazon. Now, if you don't have two matching um, UPCs there, then it is, it is a title match. Okay, so it is tried to match the title with the title um, there. And that um, is a little more hit and miss, but we, as mentioned before, have done our best to make it more hit than miss. Okay, so uh, other ways that you can see whether or not um, it is a match is the title. Now, I've recently added a feature where you can actually extend the length of the title to see the entire title. So uh, anybody who is a seasoned user may, may realize that now that they can go into settings, uh, as of even just a few days ago, and actually adjust this now so you can see the entire title. Um, you can also adjust the uh, column width as well so that you can see more of the title. Um, uh, just increase the column size there as well. You can also check it to match with the images, which is a nice, no, nice uh, way to match. And this is, uh, what, as I was saying before, is what I'm going to be looking at if these UPCs don't match and before I get to seeing whether the titles match, I will next be looking at these two images. And so that is a future feature that is coming. Um, over, over here, you have some of the important stuff, which is the money. You've got the price. Um, you've got the, uh, the price as it is on the buy box of Amazon by the current buy box holder. Now, if you're using cash, this will be what the buy box was, and this will be what the store price was at the time of that scan. 
um, and if you're if you're seeing more live data then uh, that will be the up-to-date prices what I recommend you do um, just to digress a little bit is use a longer cache but then when you've sorted out the items that you're interested in then you can go up here and click update all data with this big yellowy orange button and that will go through and it will update the following the buy price the Amazon buy, buy box price the new FBA return and I really should change that from FBA calculated price to FBA return because that doesn't make as much sense as it once upon a time did to me uh, the gross profit the gross return on investment the number of sellers and the sales rank will all be updated once you hit that button so what I would recommend you do <coughs> is run your scam with cash and see what looks juicy enough even if even if it's a 2% return on investment maybe keep that in there and then click update all data because um, prices may have shifted enough especially now we're starting to drill into Q4 on the very periphery of Q4 and you might start to see those gross return on investments change as all of these prices change as well and also you know target might have a price drop on this item for a day and it might be four dollars ninety nine so that two percent return on investment might suddenly be thirty percent so um, uh, that's just a little tip um, it's a way that I like to get my data fast using cache and then uh, sort through my data and then increase increase the result um, like update the result data using the button up here and you can actually um, break it into its components if you want to just get the source or just just get the Amazon data um, but um, update all data is really the probably the most used button now uh, categories here I don't need to explain that that's your ASIN um, that's your weight of the product and whether it's a standard standard size or an oversize uh, and you can also do um, you can also delete the product one thing we keep getting asked for is can I have a um, are you sure you want to because people go to hit the uh, save because I love this product and they accidentally hit the delete this button and then the item goes away so um, that is just <laughs> that is a user thing which we um, you know what I'm gonna make that a priority because I can see people doing that they go to hit the heart and they accidentally hit the uh oh I've lost the product I, I really wanted to save so then they got to go run the scan again and find it so so yeah, these little things we get drawn to our attention, but I've got a very long list of things to add, and so sometimes it takes me a bit to uh, to get to them all. Now, if you see an item which is a complete obvious mismatch, you can do one of two things. Um, let me try and find a mismatch. Being that it's universal product code, a lot of them won't mismatch. I'm going to just have to talk you through it because I can't find a mismatch there. Okay, so um, let's assume that these two Transformer toys were a mismatch. You can do a couple of different things. You can be completely lazy and just hit mark it as a mismatch. That's going to send it off to a different room that I'll discuss in another, in, in another week. But the mismatch room um, is sitting there with all the mismatches in it and anybody can go in at any time and make matches. When it is removed, then it's removed from all people's scans. But we can also see whether or not people are deliberately sending stuff to the mismatch room to try and hide things. So uh, that's something that we've integrated so we can keep a track on if anybody's got a, like a little a devious intention. Like if they see the perfect product here and they, uh, and they want to keep it for themselves, they might mark it as a mismatch. Well, we're able to like uh, see and you know, even remove those users from, from, from being tactical arbitrage members if they do that um, at the expense of other members finding, finding deals. So that's, so that's something that we can do there. And um, so that's the lazy way, just pop it on out um, so that it doesn't even appear in other people's. So that's a helpful thing you can do so it doesn't even appear in other people's scans. So that's less mismatches people see. Um, or uh, it might mismatch because of a quantity reason so um, you might see that on Amazon they only sell this in a pack of three where well, you can go in and you can edit the quantity to three and you can save that it'll change the color here um, it'll also adjust all of the uh, all of the prices and the gross profit and whatnot and it'll now it'll now say well that's actually uh, you know that's actually affected the um, the value of the deal 
because now it's you, now you have to buy three of these for fifty nine dollars ninety seven to actually um, to actually make up the three. Um, that's particularly useful for if you like wanting to see whether or not any any bundles or um, packs are matching. You can change the quantity there. I'll put that back to where it was. Um, and you can also um, so I'll qu just quickly if you make it if you make a change like that it it saves it for every single member. So the next person comes along and sees, oh wow, that's a quantity product and that's been matched correctly. That's a four pack at Amazon. And I can see what the correct return on investment is. And because that's got a return on investment in 22%, it's now appeared in my results. Thank you to whoever the member was who, um, who made that very, very easy to do adjustment for me. It really is a very, very simple crowdsourcing method. A less easy um, thing is manually matching the item. So if this is a completely different item, um, there's a couple of ways. You can use these arrows to kind of try and just sort of sort, sort through um, the different results to see whether you can find the right result. Or I, my personal choice is to hit the search title button and then I quickly search through and I've got, I think it's DS, uh, is it the DS domination plugin? Um, I've got that set there so I can see the ASIN right there on the category page and then I would find the correct ASIN and copy that and then I would come back here edit edit it and paste it in um, but of course making sure to choose the right one with the the best rank etc so um, you can also make that change there that'll make this background purple and once again every single user moving forward will see that result and that just that just enhances the database for everybody we have that linked into a game, like a game as well. So if you make over a certain amount of matches, like this month, I think it's, um, you make a certain amount of matches, maybe it's a uh, hundred. Anyway, the most amount of matches for the month gets a course with Christopher Grant, I believe. Um, and so, great course, by the way. Yeah, it's a really, really great course. I actually joined his course last week to, um, to, to just, just to see what it was all about. And it was just such a great, great bunch of people. And, it went into some really, really advanced tactics. I loved it. It was great. Um, so anyway, that is the view data page. I'm not sure if I've missed anything. Up the top here, you've got um, you can uh, you can flick through the pages. You can do that from either the top or the bottom. Now we we added that feature in in the last few days as well. Um, you can also select a few that you wanted to delete. You can do that down here or at the top. Uh, you can s select how many records you want to show per page. You can mark some as mismatches. You might like not want to click buttons one by one. You might want to click that button and that button and that button. Um, you can uh, you can select all. You can deselect all, um, and you can send stuff to the saved data room, which is the heart here. And I should touch on that just briefly, just to complete this section. I won't get into the mismatch page. Uh, oh, you can also download the data into a CSV from any page, including the saved data page. So let's say you're on this page right now, you just want this view data page downloaded into a CSV. You can download that and that'll send, that'll send you a, a CSV um, with everything on there. Um, and you can go into your saved data rooms and you can, you can manage these rooms. <coughs> you can make extra folders, uh, create new folders. You can copy things, copy these to a certain folder, move to another folder uh, that you've made. So you can create a new folder called, uh, let's say, um, Musicians Friend Guitars. Create. These are all just test products, by the way. I wouldn't uh, recommend that you go looking to buy these. This is just from previous uh, tutorials. And you might want to move those to another folder. Musicians, Friends, Guitars, move them in there. And then I might want to check out Musicians, Friends, Guitars. Go down there. It's just going to show me the items I just put in there. Hey, and then I might want to download that data. Um, where's my download button for this? Where's my download data button for this? Should be on the page. Oh, we 
it's download data. There's a down. Oh, here it is. It's over the left here. Sorry. For a second, I thought we were missing a button. And so that. Uh, so the. So let me just um, explain what I just saw there. The, the download data button at the top of the page is going to give you what's in the view data page. So that should say download view data. But the button here, the download data, will download the save list of the page that you are on. All these things need to go into the wiki so people understand them a little better. Um, questions? I think that's all we're going to cover today. There's a lot to, to do. Uh, oh, only one more, one more quick thing. ASINs. If the ASIN here is bl is blue and clickable, it means and I can't. Oh, there's one. It means that there are variations on the particular product. So. In this case, the variation is frustration-free packaging and standard packaging. But this is particularly useful for clothing. So um, you might find, well, you will find on clothing and shoes, particularly shoes, you might have like size 8 black shoes or size 9 khaki shoes. And then you can click that. It'll send it to the product variation page. And then you can run a scan to see whether or not a particular, a particular variation is more heavily reviewed than another and then from that you can more likely determine which are the best sellers and which are the, uh, the le lesser uh, sellers of that particular variation. And then, and then that'll help you determine which products you should buy accordingly. So I won't drill into that too much more now, but uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything on the two main pages and where Tactical Arbitrage all began. And I'm open to any questions now before we wrap up. Is there many that have built up? I'm going to come back to the main screen now.